you ever made something that you were really excited about only to find that you never actually reached for it? You probably put it on, you're really happy to wear it, and then you look in the mirror and you realize, oh, this isn't really my style. This isn't really the colors that I like to wear. This doesn't suit me all that much. And it's devastating because you've probably put so much time into it. You've also probably spent some money on it, and yet you don't have anything to show for it. And so that's what we're gonna talk about today. We are going to get into how you can make clothes that you love and actually want to wear starting with tip number one and that is to go shopping we're not actually going shopping but we're gonna pretend like we're going shopping we're gonna go to our favorite stores boutiques vintage shops whatever it is and we're gonna look at clothing that we would want to buy look at colors that you love look at shapes and textures look at styles that really appeal to you don't think about trends or any of that stuff just think about what is naturally appealing to you I'll actually take photos when I'm in stores most of the time they don't care if they do you know just say oh you're taking photos to reference for later and just take photos of things that stand out to you things that you would want to buy and wear if you shop online a lot go to your favorite online stores and add things to your cart and then save them and take a screenshot of your cart what i like to do is make sure that i'm also getting the fabric information this is really important when you're sewing your own clothes you really want to know what the fabric composition is because then you can buy the fabric that best matches what the garment is and you can get as close to a similar result as you're looking for. Once you have all your photos, you can put them into a folder on your computer or on your phone. You can put them onto a Pinterest board or whatever you like. I'll usually just do it on my phone or on my laptop to reference for later. And then one more alternative, something I like to do is I'll also save folders on Instagram. So if I see someone is wearing something I really like, I'll usually just add it to a save folder and I can reference that later as well. A lot of people on Instagram will also tag where they got it. So you can very easily go to the website of that brand look for the product and then you know save a photo of it again making sure that you know what the fabric is because that's gonna be super key the next step is sort of a mix and match so you're going to look at the photos and sort of compare what you like about all of them like maybe you've taken a photo of something and you realize it wasn't the style that you were into but it was really the color and then maybe you see something that you are absolutely in love with you love the dress you love everything about it but you don't love the color and so maybe you want to make something in that this color or maybe you're noticing that you love prints that have a lovely drape that are really flowy and kind of you know, skim the body you're going to want to really take note of all of that stuff and as you're planning your next project maybe even write a little list i like to do that a lot i will write like chorco and then i'll write denim how much ease i want is it fitted is it cropped is it long sleeve is it shorter sleeves like i'll kind of put everything that i liked about the different photos for my inspiration and combine it and then that way i can really work off of this like perfect sort of image that I have in my mind that is an amalgamation of all these different inspo photos. And then sometimes I just find something that I'm obsessed with and I want to make that exact thing. Like that has happened a number of times and I kind of repeat that process still. I always save things into a folder that are like, I want to make this exact thing. So you can also do that too. Next up, you're going to find your pattern and I'm going to link a few resources in the description box because I know that this can be a little bit challenging. One thing to keep in mind is that there are so many patterns and there are often based off of ready to wear designs. I found that I've been getting really good at matching patterns with my reference photos because like I said, there are so many patterns out there that there's one that absolutely can be a close match to what you're looking for. What I like to do is I'll go to some knitting or sewing Instagrammers who I really like and I'll kind of look at what patterns they're using. So if I know that my style is really similar to their style or they make things that I often really like, I'll look at what patterns they're making and then I'll save them to a little Instagram folder or make note of them like on a note on my computer another thing you can do is just look on pinterest or google and kind of just you know do regular search terms the way that you normally would so if you're looking for a bias cut slip dress pattern you can type that into google i also really like to look at fabric companies pinterest boards they'll often pin a ton of patterns so that's a really great place to look as well i also really like to use youtube some great youtubers will always list a bunch of sewing patterns i have a few videos like that if you ever want to browse those and then when you have your pattern you're going to find your fabric some people like to do this in reverse like they find the fabric that they absolutely love and then they find a pattern to 
fit it. You can do it either way. This is kind of how I like to do things. So once I have my pattern, I will go and I will find my fabric. The nice thing about going from having your pattern to choosing your fabric is that you are sort of given constraints within the pattern to what sort of fabric you can use. If it's a jeans pattern, they're often gonna give you a set weight of denim that you can use. And that means that it wouldn't really work that well for any fabrics that fall outside of those requirements. And this is why we saved the fabric composition of those reference photos. It makes it a lot easier when we're trying to understand how we want something to fit and what fabric we're looking for. So if something says a linen, then you know you're probably gonna want it to be in a linen. It's really, it's, it's as simple as that. Also remember that when you're choosing fabric, it really is based on texture, drape, color. So there's a lot of different factors that can influence whether or not you like something. I found that if you are not super familiar with choosing fabrics, going in person is really, really helpful because you can touch and see what things feel like. And then as you get more comfortable with fabric, it does make it a lot easier to buy online if you need to. And then lastly, after you've made your garment, what you can do is keep track of how often you wear it. Personally, I just take photos of my outfits and that kind of helps me see if I am reaching for something. But a lot of people will actually count the number of wears that each garment has in a spreadsheet. And then they can look at it and see if it is getting a lot of wear. And then this can help you sort of tweak things over time. And you know, you're not gonna always have a hit. Sometimes things are a miss, but over time you will learn what suits your body, what shapes you like, what colors, what textures, what styles. You'll start to hone in on those things and maybe it'll even change over time. I never wore dresses when I started sewing and now I wear dresses all the time because I not only loved making dresses, but I started to understand what I like about different dresses and was able to make things that suit my body and suit my style. If you're wanting to watch more sewing content, then you can click this playlist right here and that will take you to more of my videos. And if you like this video, I would really appreciate a like. It really helps me out. And if you wanna hear more from me, then subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you can see my videos every week. I hope you have a lovely day and I'll see you soon. Bye.